Hi everyone, my name is Russell. Welcome back to my channel. Tonight it's just going to be a very quick video where I show you an image that I managed to capture of the Seda region. So like I said, it's just gonna be a quick video this week where I actually show you the image that I've captured. Um, over the past three nights, I've managed to capture um, some about three hours of data on the HA, the O3 and the S2 filters um, on the Sage reg region or more specifically the Butterfly Nebula and I was able to frame that really nicely with this setup here. So this is the Ascar 400mm telescope and um, the camera is the ASI 2600 mono and I've been shooting with the Antilla 3.5 narrowband filters. Um, so yeah, I was really pleased with the, the data or what it was looking like on the on the iPad but I didn't actually record anything while shooting this target and this is probably the first time in over a year where I've actually been outside um, shooting and I didn't didn't make a video uh, and the reason for that was the, the first night I actually traveled up to Rutland so it's about two and a half hours away um, and I did that to, to photograph some ospreys and we started at, at 3 30 in the morning waiting for these ospreys to go out and dive um, and I managed to capture a few photographs of them um, so then I came back and I was pretty tired and then the following night um, which was the third night of shooting this target, I actually went out and captured some Milky Way images. So um, I was too tired, too lazy to, um, to capture any video on this, on this target. Did manage to capture a, a time lapse, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but yeah, this video is just gonna be a quick one. I'm gonna jump into the computer now, show you the data, um, and then show you the final image at the end of the video. So I just thought I'd quickly show you the data that I managed to capture over the last few nights. So this is the HA data on the Seda region and the Butterfly Nebula, which I think is looking really good. So this was 27 seven minute exposures and this has just been uh, stretched. So no editing has been done to this. Um, this is just stretched using the screen transfer function. But I'm really happy with how it's looking. So there's a lot of uh, detail in the actual um, Butterfly Nebula itself. Um, which I think is looking really good. And then if you scroll across to the top right of the image, again, there's quite a lot of detail in this section of, of the uh, the region of sky as well. So hopefully you can see that on YouTube, um, but it, it's looking really good on my computer here. So this is the O3 data. Um, again, quite a lot of detail, not as much as the HA as you, you, know, you would expect, um, but quite a lot of O3, especially in the top right hand side, quite a bit of detail here. And you can definitely pick out the uh, the butterfly nebula there as well. Uh, this was again 27 um, seven minute exposures. There's a huge halo around Seda, the bright star. Um, so it is an extremely bright star. So I'm not surprised there are is some haloing, but it's a little bit disappointing to see haloing with these Antilla 3.5 nanometer filters. But I guess. Um, that's to be expected. Hopefully I can um, get rid of that in post-processing. And then this is the S2. So this is the S2. So again, a lot more detail in the S2 than I get in some of the other regions, which is really nice. Um, again, lots of detail in the actual butterfly and then in the top right hand corner. So I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Again, a little bit of haloing on the S2 filter as well there around Seda. Um, but yeah, really happy with how this has turned out. Also had a, a flyby of what I think is the ISS um, going right through the Butterfly Nebula. So I just thought I'd quickly show you that. Could be a different satellite, but it looks quite big um, to be uh, to be any other satellite other than the ISS. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then this is what happened when I just did the LRGB combination. So no editing on this. This is just, um, just LRGB combined tool in PicInsight. So that is mapping the S2 to the red channel 
the HA to the green and the O3 to the blue. And this is what that looked like. So a lot of information there to play with and to edit. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased. Hopefully, um, hopefully the final image will look quite good. Um, so I made a couple of masks for the editing. So I made a red mask, a green mask, a blue mask. Um, something that I picked up quite recently from Joe's Astro Photo. Uh, he did a tutorial on that, so that was really helpful. And then a range mask just for the whole of the nebula. And then I went through a number of different um, edit uh, editing tools in Pick Insight. I'm by no means an expert in Pick Insight. In fact, I really, uh, really need to learn and up my skills in that. Um, but this is kind of what I went through. Um, so you can have a look at the, the uh, tools that I used here. But I've edited this a couple of times. I think the the main thing that I struggle with with astrophotography is editing. Um, I don't think I've mentioned this on the channel before, but I'm actually colorblind. So um, trying to get a natural, well, not natural, but trying to get a nice looking image um, is really a struggle for me. And I really struggle to see subtle changes in, in images. So um, I do really appreciate it if people sort of say there's too much green in the image or it's, you've processed it too far, you've pushed, pushed the colors too far. But this was my first attempt. I didn't like it at all. Um, so I started again. And what I actually did was um, make a starless um, image using the star net tool. So using the star net tool and pick inside, I got rid of the stars. I kept that as a star mask and then I added them back in towards the end. So this is the image where, where it's at, at the moment, probably the final um, edit. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. Um, so yeah, lots of detail. Like I say, I like the colors from what I can see the colors anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And I love the starless um, images as you've seen in some of my previous videos. So after going through this and editing this a couple of times, I export those um, these images as TIFFs and then open them into Lightroom and then just do a few subtle changes to them in Lightroom. Um, so this is the, let me just find it. This is the final image. So you can see just a few subtle changes. Um, so just boosted the contrast a little bit um brought down the blacks and the highlights added a little bit of clarity actually brought um down the vibrance and saturation because i think that was slightly too high um but if i just reset that you can see that's what it looked like before lightroom and then this is what it looks like with just those few minor edits um i then took it into photoshop to try and um sort out the massive haloing around the seder um i think it looks slightly better it's still not ideal but um it looks slightly better than it did. Um, and then I did the same thing with the um, with the starless version. So just use the same settings with that. Um, just boosted a couple of, you know, contrast, texture, clarity, etc. Um, so yeah, these these are the final final two images here. And um, there's the starless version. And there is the um, the final image with the stars in as well. So just a quick video to, to show you the data I've captured over the next or the last few days. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know if you've got any tips about um, editing in Pick Insight. If I'm missing a tool that would be really handy. Um, let me know if I've pushed the colors <laughs> too far or the, the colors don't look right. Um, if you could do that on all of my image, I would images, I would really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll do my best to actually get the camera out and record some content for the next uh, video. And uh, if you've liked this video, please hit that like button and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.